Next weekend in York, I will be speaking at a protest, a protest against the mass illegal immigration and the people coming here via mass illegal immigration being sent to a small town called Linton on Ooze, where people will suddenly find themselves outnumbered by people like this. That picture was taken in a part of Spanish territory. Let me tell you what has happened. 18 people, according to news reports this morning, 18 people have died after a mass attempt to cross from Morocco into Spain's enclave of Melilla. I'm sure there's a Spanish pronunciation for that. About 2,000 people approached Melilla at dawn on Friday and more than 500 managed to enter a border control area after cutting a fence with shears the Spanish government's local delegation said in a statement. Moroccan officials said late on Friday that 13 people had died of injuries sustained in the incursion, in addition to five who were confirmed dead earlier in the day. So let's be clear. This is a bit of Spanish territory, North Africa, um, and 2,000 of the doctors and lawyers you just saw in that picture. Um, huge, huge enrichment they will bring to Europe, no doubt. Um, stormed through the, it, it, the barrier in, into this, this territory. In other words, they're trying to get to Europe and they're doing so by force, now with violence, to get to European soil. European soil will take them to probably to Britain at some point, large numbers anyway. I spoke to uh, an American I gave a talk to an American organization um, this week, and even they, they they are experiencing very similar things, but they're still shocked by the numbers, hundreds every day, and the numbers this year far, far exceed last year. And it genuinely is saddening let me ask you a question. Why do you think all these people want to come here? Why do they want to come to Europe? The answer is because their own countries are not worth living in. Poverty, lack of hygiene, lack of civilised behaviour. Their own countries are not worth living in. Now let me ask you something else. Why? Why are their own countries not worth living in? Who and what makes a country? Who and what makes a country worth living in or not? It's people. That's what, that's who, that's, that's, that's what it all comes down to. If a country is steeped in poverty and not worth living in, It didn't just happen. It was made that way. And it's kept that way and sustained that way by its people. So let me ask you another question. When those people come here, what do you think they're going to do? We're told by utopian deluded fools that they're, they're going to become like us, civilised, European. The truth is, it will be the opposite. And it is the opposite. We will become like that. The saying is, import the third world, become the third world. And it's true. Look at parts, look at parts of England at the moment. Look at it. We already have third world ghettos. They're not becoming like us, we're becoming like them. We're different. Europeans are different to Africans. We've developed completely differently, completely different history, completely different story to tell. Yet we're told one at once to be multicultural and that we're all alike, which is it? It's devastating. Because I know what's, I, uh, we, we know what's coming. 
there'll be Linton on news and there'll be other Linton on news and there'll be more and more and more and more. We'll have ghettoization, an explosion in crime, especially against women and girls. That's the part that really, really saddens me because no one will give a damn. This lot coming in, they're going to rape and rape and rape and no one will give a damn. And if you do give a damn, you're a far right racist. The morally superior left have decided that if you care about the rape of young girls and of women, you are a far right racist. Their moral high ground disappears completely when they have a traumatized, battered, shattered, gang raped woman. There's no compassion for her. So speaks the morally superior left wing. We are watching in real time the complete destruction of European society. It is deeply, deeply saddening. And what's even more saddening is that the public out there have a chance to at least put a dent into this and they choose not to. We've had two parliamentary by-elections this week, despite a variety of people from a variety of parties and standpoints putting themselves forward, the people went for the status quo. Wakefield, which turned against Labour and it, it knocked us, it, this red wall down, they've gone back to Labour. Down in Tiverton, the people have gone for the Liberal Democrats. A joke of a party with absolutely no principles. And you can't even spell liberal or democrat, much less exhibit any liberalism or democracy. On that, I do want to say thanks to Frankie Ruffalo. I'm very fond of Frankie. He's a hard working chap and he is filled with enthusiasm and I hope that he is not too disheartened by this by the public's insistence on not saving itself not saving our society I can only guess or suggest that things will need to get a lot worse before the people realize what's been done to us I don't want them to get a lot worse, but they will. And maybe, maybe at some point, a tipping point will come when the people will say enough. When that happens, I will still be here. Take care of yourselves for now, and I'll see you very soon.